In the last video, we looked at the big picture, like why Amazon Aurora was built and what makes it different from traditional databases. In the process, we explored storage compute separation as a way to make things fault tolerant. In this video, we are diving into the section two of the paper, which focuses on one of the most critical challenges in any database system, which is durability. But Aurora doesn't just write to multiple replicas and essentially call it a day. Instead, it uses a quorum based model that changes the game. This ensures data is safely stored even in the case of failures. This is not just specific to Amazon Aurora, but you would be able to draw parallels to a lot of other systems and in general understand quorums and how they are used for durability. So let's get into it. This is a paper that I'm referring to, which is Amazon Aurora's design consideration. You are just a Google search away to find it. The part one of this video, uh, the where we covered uh, the first section of it is not a prerequisite, but if you watch it, it's always helpful. You can always find it on this very channel. Now. Let's dig deeper into the second part of it, which is durability. Okay. Now, when this is the, this is the second section of the paper, when it comes to durability, let's first understand what durability really is. So durability in very simple sense means that your data, which is once written and you have acknowledged it, it can be read. It sounds very simple. The data once written can be read, but when you have a when you have a setup where you're writing at different nodes uh in parallel over the network it can get a little tricky but in a very simple way data once written can be read is what durability is all about now uh, one interesting way to look at durability is that your instance lifetime is not equal to your storage lifetime what does this mean this means that even if you're it's okay for an instance to go down uh -huh. But this doesn't mean that the data that you have stored goes down with it. That's why it's durability. Like even if something happens to your instance, you should not be losing your data. That's what most databases kind of guarantees. Now, in what cases would instance go down? It could happen because of a graceful shutdown of the machine or your machine needs to be resized because it needs to be scaled or your disk or storage nodes can fail due to whatever reason. So which is where uh, a lot of databases actually focuses on storage compute separation, which again, I've covered it in the first part of this uh, series, but feel free to ignore it and then you can revisit it later. Not a hard prerequisite. Okay. But you say, how like this, this actually doesn't happen very often. So why are we bothered about it? Think about it in a large scale cloud environment this is actually a continuous low level background noise essentially all the disk and the network failures that happen when you have let's say one ec2 machine that goes like let's say you have a a, a, a simple stat which says uh, one ec2 like on an average an ec2 machine can go down once a year hypothetical example right but imagine you would say hey it's once a year thing but imagine the case where what if you have a fleet of 315 or 365 instances, suddenly your yearly failure is like you are almost always every day on, on an average, you are mitigating an instance failure, right? So which is why when you are off, when you're managing a large fleet of infrastructure, do not consider your error as if it happens, it's more about when it would happen. So you have to make sure of that. And this is classic case where you would be focusing on like the errors that would happen would be like a transient lack of network connectivity to a node or your temporary downtime or a machine reboot that happens or maybe a permanent failure of a disk, a node, a rack, a leaf or a spine of your network switch or even a data center for that matter. So when you're offering a database as a managed service at huge at this scale, this all needs to be considered. So the core approach, the core approach is essentially a quorum based approach. Now, first of all, what does quorum mean? Quorum means that you may have like a decentralized, like a set of nodes who are agreeing on to something right? and they all should be agreeing to one and the only thing. That's what quorum is. Right? And eventually they would agree on all in the like uh, all, all of the nodes would be agreed to that one thing, that one state. Right? Now, the whole idea of quorum is if you and again here we are talking about quorum in the case of durability 
right? And the idea is simple that instead of having one copy of data, you would have V copies of data. V could be any number that you pick three, five, seven, nine, whatever, one, two, three, four, five, six, up to you. So V copies of replicated data and a read operation must obtain a read quorum of VR nodes, which means that when I issue a read, I would consider my read to be successful when my read is served via VR nodes and then I would be taking the most common value or the latest value out of it depending on my resolution strategy and I would consider that hey this is the value that I would be returning and the write operation must obtain a write quorum sorry not a read quorum but a write quorum of VW nodes now what does let me make a change right here otherwise I would forget okay write quorum of VW nodes now what does it here what it means is when I'm issuing a write, my writes would go, I would consider my write to be complete if my write is successfully done on VW nodes. Otherwise I would not consider it. But and the most critical condition is VR plus VW should be greater than V. What does this mean? That the number of nodes on which the writes, the bare minimum number of nodes on which I would write before I say my write is acknowledged or my write is complete, plus the number of nodes that I'm reading from out of which I would be picking the latest value, it should be greater than B. Not greater than equal to, but strictly greater than B. This way I'm ensuring that there is at least one node with the newest version so that I can serve my latest read and I can ensure, uh, so okay, I can serve my latest read when the read is issued and my write overlaps with that. Right? And more importantly, my VW should be greater than V by 2. Now, the reason for this is very interesting. Like we typically just consider VR plus VW greater than V, but VW should be greater than V by 2. Why? Because if I'm ensuring my write quorum that it would acknowledge my write is considered to be successful when it is sent to at least VW nodes such that VW is more than half. It means that each write will be aware of the most recent write because the overlap, it would happen because of majority essentially. Right? So let me explain. So you would not have a condition of a conflicting rights. For example, let's take a very practical example. Let's say I have my total number of nodes to be 10. Right? And I consider my VW to be 2. That if my writes is successful on 2 nodes, I would consider it to be to be uh, my writes to be complete. Right? And my VR is 9. 9 plus 2 is greater than 11. So my first condition is met. But because my VW is not greater than V by 2, which is 5, because VW is 2, what would happen? Now think about it. There would be conflicting writes. Let me explain. Let's say my write has come uh, for a particular key k1 and it has gone to node a and b right and because both a and b acknowledged it i would say my write is successful right? and then my another write came and went to node my conflicting write came and went to node i and j and they also agreed now the problem is because this, because both the rights we have acknowledged to be correct, but these are conflicting rights. Ideally, this should have, ideally the second right should have been rejected, but that would not happen. So now, which is the final value? We don't know, right? And when the read happens, we don't know what's the final value here, it's because there is no overlap, right? So which is why you, for you to have a very a uh, strict quorum or a strict consistent view of the data, you need to have your VW to be greater than V by 2. This way of the right node overlap, you would know that because VW is greater than V by 2, when you make sure that your right is, whenever you issue a right, even if they go to two, like you would never have a dis, two disjoint subsets of nodes where my right is getting acknowledged, right? There will at least be overlap of one node. That's what we are trying to achieve here but what does but then okay if that's the case i would go with a very standard configuration of hey let me have a two by three quorum or two three quorum now what is two by three quorum it means that i would have a three node and out of which two uh like my vw would be equal to two right now v is equal to three vr is two and vw is two now this is inadequate at scale why so 
so this is almost like whenever someone explains quorum or someone talks about quorum there's a very popular configuration that people would go with a hey, three node quorum and now out of which we would consider majority right so two for reads and two for writes overlap would at least be one but at scale this is not a good idea why let's me uh here will be one step deeper so at scale you have a larger fleet of infra and as we discussed prone to failures right? so the nodes are consistently and continuously failing here or there left right and center right? nodes can go down disk can go down machines can go down and even the entire availability zone the data center in itself or the entire availability zone which is typically a data center can go down right? due to network failure power outage natural calamity whatever right? now consider this scenario like why am i saying it's inadequate at scale so let's consider the first scenario the first scenario is simple imagine all of your three nodes are present in one easy so if that easy is down it's not uncommon right? if that easy is down your complete data becomes unavailable you may not have lost the data unless there is a major major like event that leads to like loss of storage due to whatever reason but at least the, your data becomes unavailable for whatever reason right so one easy of course not a good choice here now imagine you have a situation where your two of your nodes are on one AZ and one node is on second AZ. So if the AZ which contains two node goes down, then again, you would not be able to meet a quorum because you only have one node which is available and you cannot have quorum because you are waiting for other two nodes to be available, which are not there. So your writes are hampered, your reads are hampered. Now consider the case where you have three nodes distributed across three different availability zones. Now, even if one of the availability zone when one of your availability zone becomes unavailable then you have two nodes you are like hey i have two nodes to handle it but think about it because the errors are continuously happening what would happen is what if one of the two nodes in the other two acs is down due to whatever reason and while this availability zone is unavailable this one this one extra node went down so now you again lost the quorum given we are operating on a very large fleet this is not very uncommon that's why we have to be mindful of it so at scale the probability of double fault is sufficiently high that's the whole idea so that's why two uh, that's why two by three quorum is typically inadequate at scale especially at amazon scale so what does aurora do in this case so aurora has designed its quorum such that it can tolerate az plus one failure which means it can tolerate that if one az is down one availability zone is down plus one more node is down still my database would be up and running or would be available so what they do is they create six copies of data not one not two not three six copies of data and store two each in three availability zones with configuration of vw equal to four and vr equal to three so this way what happens is so for the write quorum votes is equal to four and your read quorum is equal to three so how what kind of errors are they tolerating so imagine if your one or uh, one availability zone is down one az is down so which means your two nodes are unavailable you have two availability zones still up and running so here your four nodes from the remaining two availability zone can fulfill your requirements vw equal to four and vr equal to three because the rights would have to go to all four of the available nodes that you have right so here in this case your both your reads and writes are available right? now imagine your one easy is down and one node from the other four available nodes is down so your rights are unavailable because you would never be able to meet v vw equal to four in that case but your reads can be served so your database is still available to serve reads although rights are unavailable at that time which is pretty awesome but again you can start seeing that you are maintaining six copies of replicated data but that's okay now what amazon aurora also does they like how do they manage their storage so what they've done is they use something called as segmented storage the idea is simple uh, a segment is a fixed size segment of 10 gb now the segment is not equal to one disk a disk a db volume can be typically 64 tb but within which your data is segmented and stored as 10 gb splits 
and this segment is actually the unit uh, a unit of storage for them so this way they reduce the blast radius and they reduce the mean time to repair let me explain we'll, we'll talk about it so each of this segment that you have each of this segment is actually replicated six times as we saw v is equal to six so across three availability zone and they call it one protection group right? now the segment that you have a 10 gb segment that you have in case this segment gets corrupted or becomes unavailable or something happens it just takes 10 seconds on a 10 gbps link for this data to be replaced because you have five other copies and let's say one copy became corrupt or unavailable or that node become un unavailable so within 10 seconds you can create the sixth copy by asking other nodes to chip in here with the data right so within 10 seconds your nodes get your node or your data copy gets repaired because it's getting replaced essentially right that's the core benefit that you have that the mean time to repair has been shrunk to just 10 seconds that if something goes wrong with the segment they can quickly repair in 10 seconds time that's why the size of 10 seconds for a segment for you to lose quorum in this setup you need again your disk is not your uh, unit of storage here your segment is so you for you to lose the quorum for that segment two nodes holding the same segment should fail belonging to one az uh, sorry two nodes belonging to the same segment should fail plus a complete failure of the az holding the same segment <laughs> sufficiently unlikely at amazon scale right so this is the uh edge case that they are okay with that if it happens it happens but it's sufficiently unlikely even at amazon scale to happen right so this is what they do to make sure that uh, the rights that you are doing are extremely durable now what does why this segmenting thing to happen so segments actually bring in operational simplicity the idea is that if your segment becomes hot or something happens let's say a node became hot or a segment became hot you just mark that segment as bad the quorum will automatically kick in and will try to repair which means they say okay, hey this is unavailable it will automatically find a node copy the data and within 10 seconds your hotness is handled so all the segments imagine if a disk is hot you mark all the segments on the disk as bad and suddenly your quorum will automatically kick in and your infrastructure is self healable that's the core thing that's the core benefit that you get and this can also be extended to your rollout processes in case you want to roll out a patch or a security upgrade or something you can just roll this out by marking one available like you can mark one node as uh, uh, you can mark one node as uh, bad and like one volume as bad or one node as bad and everything that was owned by it the quorum will take care of replicating it to other nodes and within 10 seconds per thing uh per segment and a lot of things happening in parallel you can get a lot of you can do a rolling release or a rolling patching and whatnot over here so this breakage or this split of 10 gb is a lifesaver to say the list here and makes your operational thing super simple and this is very common pattern that you would see people uh creating partitions of data to do heat management essentially right okay and this essentially covers the section two of the paper amazon aurora which is what we are reading in the series uh next video will cover the section three of it which is pretty fascinating i have some rough notes around that in this one already but we'll cover we'll talk about it when i release the video in next few days right so yeah this is all what i wanted to cover i hope you found it interesting hope you found it amazing that's it for this one i'll see you in the next one thanks for time